Soundscapes of the Etruscan and Ancient Romans, Interactive Exhibition of Ancient Musical Instruments. Music and Musical Instruments of the Ancient Romans The musical landscape of Roman civilization is very varied. We can see this from the quantity of images and actual instruments that have come down to us. And from the inscription mentioning musicians and professional associations called Collegia. First they absorbed the musical world of the Etruscans, then they reworked the Greek one, especially after the conquest of Corinth in 146 before Christ. And finally they contaminated these two traditions with those of the peoples that gradually became part of the empire. In fact, Egyptian, Syrian, Spanish and, of course, Greek musicians arrived in Rome, increasing the types of instruments and musical festivals. Orchestras were formed with numerous elements playing in the theatres. Music was present both in public events, in theatres, amphitheatres, circuses, religious and military celebrations and in private events such as weddings and funerals. In the ranks of the armies, as in those of the Etruscans, there were specialised soldiers, such as the Cornu Plain Cornicines, whom we can see, for instance, on the Trian Column next to the Tubicines, the tuba players. A musician who was part of the Collegium, such as that of the Tibia players, the Tibicines, enjoyed important advantages, such as own real estate, benefiting from festive meals and being respected in society. The musicians also achieved remarkable achievements and technical progress. To the tibia, for example, they added movable rings to vary the filling of the note holes or keys so that they could have more plain possibilities. They also perfected the hydraulis, the pipe organ of Greek origin driven by the forces of water. Wind instruments. Among the wind instruments that predominated in the musical landscape of the Romans were those that would belong to the brass family but were actually made of bronze and were played with a mouthpiece. Among them was the corno. It was a special, strongly curved bronze trumpet of Etruscan origin up to three metres long to form a circle with a crossbar in the centre made of wood or metal which served to reinforce the instrument and allowed the player to rest the instrument on his shoulder so that the mouthpiece was in front of his mouth and the pavilion, the end part, above his head. It was the typical instrument of the military world and was played by professionals. The cornu was also played at religious ceremonies, funerals and theatre performances. Tuba was a typically Roman instrument, similar to the Greek and Etruscan salpinx, consisting of a bronze horn or ivory tube about 120 centimetres long ending in an open or truncated bell with a separate mouthpiece. During the celebrations of Mars on the 23rd of March and during the celebrations of Vulcan on the 23rd of May, the rite of purification of the tube, Tubilustrium, was performed. It had a terrible sound suitable for frightening the enemy in battle. During attacks and when charging, the Legio III Augusta, which militated in Africa, came to have 30 to 40 tuba players. However, we also find it used in triumphs, funerals and religious ceremonies. The litrus of Etruscan origin was similar to the tuba, but different from it by its upward curved pavilion. It was used in the military, in civil and religious ceremonies, in gladiatorial combat and in circus races. Among the wind instruments played with the reed were the tibia, auloi, the reed was usually double. The musician, like the Greek and Etruscan one, helped himself in the performance with the leather band over his mouth, the capistrum. They could have two reeds of equal length, tibia pares, and were compulsory during religious ceremonies to appease the gods and cover the cries of animals led to the sacrifice. Their music probably had a sober character and was regulated by strict rules. The tibia in pares, or frige, on the other hand, had two reeds of different lengths. One was straight and the other sharply curved, and were used exclusively in the rites of the Phrygian goddess Sibel and in Dionysian rites, together with cymbals, 
Britain timpani, they contributed to the excitement and stun of the followers. The plagjaulos, an instrument already played by the Greeks and rarely by the Etruscans, similar to the transverse flute, was closed at one end. Then we have the fistula, the Greek syrinx or pan flute, consisting of reeds of different lengths, joined by vegetable or leather cords or waxes, was blown transversely over the upper openings and the tone was given by the length of the reeds. It is often found as an attribute of the shepherd Attis, the beloved of the goddess Sibel. The Romans eventually perfected the hydraulic organ the hydraulis, the progenitor of the organ, which according to sources was invented by Tisibius of Alexandria, one of the scientists of the Museum of Alexandria in the mid-3rd century before Christ. By means of a hydraulic system of pumps, valves and communicating vessels, water pressure was created inside the organ, pushing air into the sound pipes above, making them resonate through a keyboard. Those of considerable size were usually played by three people, two pumping and the musician playing. Smaller models, driven by bellows, were also in use. Stringed instruments. String instruments include the lyra, which was very similar to the Greek and Etruscan lyra. Later examples had a sound box made of wood. It normally had seven strings, but there are also examples with 12 or more strings. The Roman chitara derived from the Greek kitara, already used by the Hittites in the 15th century before Christ, and was made entirely of wood, and whose arms were much greater than those of the lyra. To reach larger dimensions, such as the box-shaped chitara with two independent forward-curved arms, it could have up to 18 strings, and the most recent examples were regulated by cavicles planted in the crossbar. We often see it in mosaics in the hands of Orpheus with which he charms animals or in statues played by the god Apollo. The lyra and the chitara were played with pigs of considerable size. Also present from the mid-2nd century AD was the harp, also called corde oblique, a typical female instrument which was already present in ancient Egypt. It was played while seated and could have 6 to 20 strings, as in Greece. The pandura was already known to the Sumerians, Egyptians and Greeks. It had a sound box made of wood or tortoise shell, with three or four strings that were pressed together like today's guitar. The sambuka was a boat-shaped instrument, like a small harp with a variable number of short strings, with which particularly high-pitched sounds could be obtained. It was derived from the Greek sambike, and according to tradition, was invented by the Greek lyric poet Hibicus. However, it was already present in the East, and especially in Egypt, often played by women. Percussion instruments, the membranophones. The tympanum was a drum consisting of bronze or ivory hoops with a diameter of between 20 and 40 centimeters, on which an animal skin, donkey or ox skin, was stretched which was beaten either with hand or with a knocker. We often see it in the hands of the Phrygian goddess Sibylle, her companion Attis, and the followers of Dionysus, especially women. The ideophones, cymbalas, even large ones, are often seen played in the cults of goddess Sibylle, the god Dionysus and Demeter. Other types are also observed, held by long wooden sticks, typical of dancers. The scabellum, Krupetsai in Greece, on the other hand, was a large sandal that was played with the right foot by the musician who could thus also play the tibia or cymbala with his hands. It was made of two overlapping wooden boards held together by a hinge made of leather laces. Attached to the inside were two small cymbals, which were resonated when you tapped your foot in rhythm. The scabellarium thus marked the time for the mime or pantomime dancer and gave the rhythm to the chorus in performances, also announcing the end. We often find it in Bacchic processions depicted on sarcophagi. Imported from Egypt was a sistrum, typical of the cult of the Egyptian goddess Isis. Made mostly of bronze, the most precious were made of silver. It resounded by shaking tubular metal elements 
that run through a frame made in the shape of a horseshoe. Some of them were decorated with cut-shaped figurines. The crotala, also used by the Greeks and Etruscans, were very similar to today's castanets and were mainly used by female dancers. Made of two pieces of wood, metal or bone, they are connected by a wooden or leather hinge and were played by holding them with long bronze sticks and striking them to beat the rhythm. Finally, there were the various types of rattles, the tintinnabula and the crepitacula. The former were types of metal bells, whilst the latter were made of terracotta in the shape of animals. The latter were mainly used by children and mothers. Project by Francesco Landucci and Cinzia Murolo. Experimental reconstruction of musical instruments by Francesco Landucci. Triclinium Room. Reconstruction by Francesco Landucci based on a project by Cinzia Murolo. Panel editing Cinzia Murolo. Graphic design Diego Lucci. Translation by Kim Bizzarri. Thank you.